Hey, it's Jean Glay, and uh, it is October, and that means it's Inktober, so I thought I would do a quick video on the methods of inking comics. Um, there are three types of methods. They're really basic. It's either physical, digital, or some hybrid between the two. Uh, the physical traditional method is uh, to first draw out your, uh, your comic in pencil on uh, usually like 11 by 17 Bristol board that's specially ruled so that it can then shrink down to the proper comic size. And then you ink over those pencil lines with uh, a dip nib pen. Uh, and, you know, the inks and the pens that are used for that are, you know, many, numerous, all kinds of opinions on that. Uh, modern, more modern uh, inking style has markers. You can, you know, get India ink markers to do that, or you can um, use brushes. Now, that gets this traditional look of comics and everything that you'd expect um, the, the uh, bleed of the paper kind of gives the, this nice little feathery edge to the ink and, and it looks really good. But in order to do this, you also have to erase your pencil lines after the ink is dry. And that does degrade uh, the quality of the ink a little bit, fading. So there's benefits and drawbacks to that, but that's the traditional physical method of inking. Um, now, because it is difficult to maintain that kind of studio environment where you're, you know, drying ink and, and uh, the line degrading and everything, a lot of comic creators use a hybrid method where they um, pencil the drawing on either the Bristol board or some other medium and scan it into the computer and then they digitally prepare the lines in either one of two ways. They can take that pencil drawing and then re-ink it digitally, 100% digitally with a digital brush, or they can take the pencil drawing and edit it with the graphics program to uh, darken the pencil lines, get rid of the noise that the scanner introduces, the paper green texture, and um, get rid of unwanted color, uh, unwanted color channels if you're using, say, a bl blue or a red pencil to do an under sketch. Now this uh, is the method that I have been using for quite a while, and it's got uh, its own benefits and drawbacks. It retains the hand-drawn look because the pencil, uh, as the, the graphite catches in the paper, it still gives that kind of feathered look that you get from the ink. It's not quite the same, but it d doesn't look digital. Um, the the uh, drawbacks of this are all of the drawbacks of the traditional method. Um, for me, the particular problems were drawing on a flat surface uh, was, were introducing perspective problems into my art, which, you know, I can easily correct when uh, I'm in a, the graphics program, but it's just another thing that has to be done. Um, that's why artists wind up with the, the big 45 degree angle art boards. Now the, the other problems were that this introduced this uh, process of scanning and cleaning up the ink and you know it's, it's, it was extra steps. So in the most recent sequence I uh, went full digital and this was an interesting experiment. Uh, doing art 100% digitally uh, means that you'll do all your sketching and, and your structural stuff on another layer, and then uh, after you've got you know your ba basic under underpainting idea, make a new layer and get a digital inking brush and ink directly over your sketch. Basically, I mean in the same way that you would do it. Uh, with the traditional or the hybrid method. The benefits of this is that there's no transfer of images from one space to another. It's it's very elegant workflow. You don't have to clean up and edit the lines. And for me, it was very much easier to place uh, my characters in perspective over the 3D rendered backgrounds that I do in Chateau Grief. And um, I was doing a scene with 
12 characters in the scene um, in most of the frames. And so having the ability to just draw it on in perspective um, was great. And I think it turned out really well. It turned out definitely better than trying to mesh the physical drawing and then set up a camera angle and then sort of hack it together in, in a graphics program. That's a lot more difficult. So the caveats uh, that I discovered for this process were the brush. It really does matter that you have a good brush. And it's impossible to make it look traditional without the right brush. It took me years to track down a brush that would behave as I wanted and also kind of get that little tiny bit of a feathery edge look. And that's really difficult. Most of the brushes that I discovered out there were tied to a size um, so that, you know, the brush was always eight pixels wide. And if you tried to size it up or down, it wouldn't work right. And in order to have that work, you really have to know what canvas size you should be working on in that. And I, I like to adjust my brush sizes. So that it was definite, definitely I needed a brush that could size up and down. Um, I also needed brushes that would work with the opacity and the flow. Um, sometimes I'm, I, I deal with both of those things uh, with this brush that I'm currently using, which is good uh, for a lot of a lot of things because it's got texture in it but you know as as you adjust the opacity and the flow you can make it look more and more like a pencil or more and more like ink um, it's a great brush and, and the other the other real caveat for me was having a brush that was extremely sensitive because I don't like to use a lot of pressure on my tablet and uh, a lot of these brushes just weren't sensitive enough um, and that's part of it's the settings of the graphics tablet, but a lot of it is how the brush actually works and flows on your screen. Uh, so good brush was really necessary for this. The other thing that I discovered was that my hand-eye coordination between, you know, doing a tablet down here kind of flat and then looking at the screen and, and figuring that that whole three-dimensional stuff out. I wasn't, I didn't have the hand-eye coordination for this in the beginning. And uh, I said, look, I can, I can have much better precision on a flat piece of paper than, you know, the, doing it on the screen. So um, I was really surprised when I came back to try this again that, oh wow, you know, all of a sudden I can draw it on the screen. And so, fine, I can do that now. But it took a, it took a lot of practice, a couple years of practice actually, to get to be able to do that. So, you know, if you can't do it now, maybe try again in a year. Um, the drawbacks of this are that uh, digital files are easily lost. So keeping and maintaining a good backup schedule is essential. I mean, it's always essential, but it's even more essential if you really don't have any backup plan. Um, I miss having my huge stack of paper that I, I would have when I finish my scene. I, you know, carry my stack of paper back to the back room and stick it in with all the other scenes and flip through stuff and think, you know, I've accomplished something. So with the digital stuff, you don't have that, but Hopefully I can um, streamline my process a bit, make it work a little bit better, maybe get uh, some cleaner lines. Definitely the digital lines look a bit cleaner because uh, you know, no matter how much time I would spend cleaning the traditional lines, uh, there was always still some amount of noise around the lines that I couldn't always wipe out. And that, you know, that took time. That took about half an hour per comic maybe just to clean the lines and you know it was something that I could I could force it digitally by um, by uh, the use of the adjustment layers in say Photoshop to uh, quantize the color but then that would cut out some of that nice pencily look so I was ending up you know doing mass selections of of uh, heavily noised areas and, and erasing them by hand. And that, you know, it took time. So not having that 
is a really nice thing to speed up this process. So um, a lot of people are very sensitive to the look of digital lines and, uh, and understand line quality in a way that I'm not I don't really know what they're they're seeing quite so much, but the more I learn about lines and the more I learn about this process, the more I can see what it is that is uh, so special about line quality and, and weight and stuff. And I'm uh, looking forward to seeing what I learn next. Thanks for watching.